You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Hey there, this is John from Gen X Grown Up, and you are watching That Atari Show. Welcome to that Atari show. Ballistic Coffee Boy here, your host. So if you didn't see it, guys, uh, please go check out my review for the Atari 50 uh, Deluxe Home Arcade Cabinet by uh, Arcade 1UP. It is a great cabinet. Got it right back here behind me. Uh, check out my review. It was a lot of fun. Um, I also do some assembly in that. So that was really special for me to make, and I love making it. So check it out. Also, you guys, uh, this episode, I'm excited to say uh, we have Gen X Grown Up as our special guest. Now, uh, him and I did talk for uh, a couple sessions on Zoom, so this is going to be a really quick intro. I just want to say I appreciate Gen X Grown Up so much, uh, John, for coming on. We had such a great time. Uh, this is going to be an awesome interview, and I can't wait for you to hear it. We talk about everything from my arcade to um, building a partnership with the company to Atari, of course, uh, to the Game Station Pro, all kinds of stuff, and childhood memories. It's just really cool. And um, also uh, being a YouTube content creator. Uh, so I did, did play some clips throughout. Um, I placed them throughout his interview. They're not long, just because I don't want you to have to sit through more than an hour and a half. So uh, this is going to be about an hour and a half. So, uh, But it will go by really fast because it was such a cool interview. I loved it. So thank you, John, for coming on. Let's get started. Uh, here we go. Oh, and happy Halloween. Here's my costume. What do you think? from Atari.com. Gen X Grown Up. It's a website, it's a podcast, it's the YouTube channel you're watching right now. Run by some guys who grew up in the 70s and 80s. But it's more than nostalgia. Sure, we produce content about tech, toys, games, and media all around when we were growing up. But we also cover modern stuff, and we cover that through the eyes of people who grew up in what we would argue was a very special generation. Hey guys, welcome to that Atari show. I have a great guest with me, uh, John, here. Um, and you want to introduce yourself, sir, and tell us who you are, those, those few of us that don't know in the Atari community. I'm sure there's plenty who don't know who I am. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. So uh, I'm John, and uh, and I am the founder and owner and primary person on the camera with uh, Gen X Grown Up, uh, which is a YouTube channel and a weekly podcast and a website and whatever else shenanigans we get ourselves into, all under the Gen X Grown Up brand. Perfect, perfect. And what kind of stuff do you feature on your channel? I mean, I know, but just to those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, you know, so when we first started, it's you know, we first started channel and you're like, well, what are we going to talk about? And initially, like our podcast, it's all things Generation X experience. But what YouTube teaches you is it will beat you into submission and tell you what it wants you to do by <laughs> rewarding you when you do what it wants and and ignoring you when you don't. So <laughs> and gradually over time, yeah, yeah, more and more. I mean, <laughs> you know, like Atari stuff and uh, retro games in general are one facet of the Generation X experience. And so over time, over the last couple of years, we've narrowed in. And primarily our YouTube uh, channel and the content that we do is about nostalgia for old video games, retro games, arcade games especially. I don't even get into Nintendo because that was my girlfriend's little brother played Nintendo. I never had one well, until later, I guess I did. But uh, yeah, it's you know pretty much just like ColecoVision and back is all the kind mm -hmm. of gaming stuff that we tend to cover these days. Yeah. You, uh, you said you didn't have a Nintendo growing up? No, well, I got a... I def definitely didn't have an NES because I was in high school and then I only got a Super Nintendo secondhand in college mm. because Street Fighter was so damn good on it. And I'm like, I'm spending so much money in the arcade on Street Fighter and I'm like, this thing is really good. So I ended up buying specifically, uh, like I went to Toys R Us and I got a SNES and I got Street Fighter. I think at the time it was Super Street Fighter 2 is what they had. Mm. And that's all I needed. I wasn't shopping for other games. I, I had what I needed, but... Uh, like never stopped playing, you know, Atari stuff. So, yeah, I am. Um, I'm, I'm 48. Um, I had a, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how old you are, but I had a, uh, Atari when I was seven or eight and then, you know, I got older and the game stopped coming out and we just kind of forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and life went on. I got into action figures and cartoons and movies and, you know, all that playing outside. And, and so you know, uh, my my uh, family lost everything in 86 and like everything. We went from being super rich to poor and wow. lived in a two bedroom apartment near a DFW airport and Roach and did all that. And so it was kind of crazy. We went some nights without electricity. And on my 13th birthday, my dad pulled a gift out and said, I've been saving for this. I put it on layaway at Kmart and he goes, I know you really wanted it. And, and this is why we've been without electricity sometimes. And I opened it up and it was NES. And wow. so when I got that, I mean, I was, you know, I was, I was a teenager. I was going through all of this internal stuff, like every teenager. Mm -hmm. is. And with me even more so, but it was, it was just great to get that. Cause I spent a lot of time alone and um, with my NES. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and I, I'm still socially awkward, but, um, I kind of withdrew into it just as I got into Welcome my to the TI. club, brother. <laughs> yeah. It's like I got into my Atari when I was younger and, and my TI-89. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just really poured myself into it. And it, was, it saved my life, honestly, um, getting back in the game. That's amazing. But, and then after the, when the pandemic happened, long story short, I got back into Atari. So um, it kind of came full circle in a way. I was a Nintendo fanboy mm -hmm. for like 20 years. And then found my way back as an older man that appreciates what these games are, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I uh, see each game now as a piece of art, you know. It's a piece of art. You kind of have to, you know, read your own thing into it. <laughs> it's kind of like abstract your... art in some cases. Kind of, kind of squint. Like I think I see a yeah. What is that supposed to be? Yeah, like uh, even like the. A... Sword even Quest, the, for instance. You know? <laughs> yeah, even <laughs> even bad Atari games. You know, I do so many videos on Atari, and and you get you get people that just don't get it. And for them, I I understand. They're like, yeah. these games are awful. Yeah. Well, okay. First, first, that's subjective. They're awful to you. Okay. But objectively, they aren't great games by today's standard. But as pieces of historical, they're artifacts. It's a thing that was created that is time locked in the time it was created, what knowledge we had at the time, what talent we had, the <laughs> the budget and the schedule they had. You know, you, you look at what happened to poor E.T., things like that. Mm -hmm. They are a product of the time and can be enjoyed. I can enjoy playing basic math, not because it's fun, but because I'm like, this was one of the launch titles and this counted as a game when it came out and... It just that part of it, I just like playing and like, wh what did the guy creating it think he was doing? You know, 
He didn't even bother drawing numbers. He's like, let's put blocks. It looks like a number. It looked like stacking blocks. It wasn't even medium resolution. You know, use sprites. Eh, who needs sprites? <laughs> Just forget it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really interesting. You know, and I agree with you there. It's kind of a, it, I, I do find it mostly generational to kind of left for Atari, mm -hmm. like 2600, all that, because, um, you know, I, I, I have a few friends now who are in their early 20s who are into Atari that, I found in, in my viewers and everything, but they're really rare. It's mostly guys in their forties and fifties and girls that kind of grew up with it and, um, you know, have an affinity for it or nostalgia for it. There are some new kids though. I'm finding that are getting into it in their early twenties into old Atari and especially, you know, with homebrews, the homebrew scene and, um, and you, and with retro kind of being back. And, um, so it, it it's happening a little, um, you know, but it's mostly people our age, you know, and uh, yeah. I would be fascinated to learn or to understand what someone in their twenties, what they see in, in Atari games, because I, I get, I get that they look rudimentary and they look like mm -hmm. garbage. If you don't have any of this nostalgia or any of the direct, like the, the connection to it, the umbilical that goes back to the primal, like I played this when I was in my formative years. You know, like I can, I can remember there's something visceral to me about adventure and Yar's revenge. And like, I remember, and it outlaw, especially like, I remember each of those games. There's a moment I can picture where I'm at, who mm -hmm. I'm with, who's yeah. in the room, what the furniture looks like, where I'm sitting, what the TV look, it's just, it's burned in. Yeah. And so when I play adventure, I get that with the game. Right. So I wonder what people in their twenties, do they, are they just as historical curiosity? Cause they're not getting the same endorphins that I am right. when I play this stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, when I play Enduro or a pitfall, I feel that I feel mm -hmm. like I'm in the shag green carpeting. I can even smell it. I can even smell mm -hmm. it. It's 83. There's Billy Otto, Rebel Yell playing in the corner. <laughs> my sister sitting there chewing gum uh playing enduro and pitfall and i can smell it I mean? I can hear it i can feel it it's it's all visceral it's crazy and mm -hmm. yeah so i get that and you know what i found is uh some of them find it neat that these things existed and how how kind of rudimentary it looked and 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 I'm, i mean some of them got into the history of it started listening to podcasts and kind of got into it mm -hmm. and i think that's really cool because as time goes on, I feel like there's not going to be as many of us as there are now, you know? Uh, oh, yeah. I always say this, they're know? not making new Gen Xers. Like, we're, right. we're a declining commodity. They're not going to be any fresh ones coming along to take our place. Right. Uh, but, but you know, like, like, so thinking of, like, trying to make a parallel. So I'm a huge fan of old radio shows from the 40s. Mm -hmm. And that's well before I was born. I was born in 69, right? Mm -hmm. um, but at least those... You can listen to them and hear the story still, right? Right. I don't have the visceral connection that someone who was alive in the 40s who enjoyed them then would remember. They're not going to remember what the radio looked like and the, how the tubes smelled and the hum of the tubes. None of that's going to be good for for me that it would be for them. Mm -hmm. And I and maybe I guess I can see how somebody in their 20s could find another way to enjoy them even though they don't have that, that direct connection, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean... I mean, a, a, a interesting example is I was talking to a client at work the other day. She was a parent and she was born after 9-11. And I was having a hard, hard time grasping it, you know, because mm -hmm. I was I was 26 when it happened. And, you know, yep. and um, I'm just like, you weren't born yet. And it just <laughs> it doesn't seem like that long ago. That made me yeah. right then. It made me realize how fast 20 years goes by. Uh, when yep. I was born. 20 years before that was 55. That seems like ages ago, you know, but yeah, it's yeah. time flies so quickly. My dad was so right to em embrace every moment, live every day, you know, um, mm -hmm. and our experience, you know, is our experience with Atari and all this, you know, shag carpeting, wood panel walls, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And, yep. and future generations. I mean, I have, a, I have a cousin, her, her daughter's like 16, and she's talking about when she was a kid, how certain things are stuck in her memory. And, and, and when I think of 2002, the time she was talking about, I'm like, it didn't seem that memorable to me, but to her it was. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I guess these newer kids have their own little memories, you know, of mm -hmm. things that are important <laughs> to them or whatever, you know? 
Uh, They're like regular people too. Yeah, <laughs> they, they just don't share our experiences, and they get right. in the comments sections of our videos and go, "These are dumb games" because they don't get it. <laughs> right, and I get these people all the time. You probably do too. Uh, you know, sometimes in the comments or in chat, and it's like, if you don't like it, stop watching it. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm not getting paid a whole lot. Uh, you know, it's you know, but it's. Let me tell you, I I have a I'm great friend like who, it, you know? who has said over and over. He said to me. I don't understand how people find time to comment on stuff they hate. I don't have time to comment on the stuff I love. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. I've, got, I've, I've got two jobs that work 60 hours a week. And then the YouTube channel is like a third job. Um, and it's, I don't, I don't have any time to, nope. you know, I can barely get to people that say they appreciate my stuff. And I know that sounds terrible, but yeah. And you probably have the same thing, you know, it's, uh, and you and John Hancock have it really bad. You know, I only have 1.3 K subscribers. So, you know, you have that times 30 or whatever. So uh, yeah, it's, it's probably crazy on your end. Is it, is it pretty crazy over there <laughs> or is it manageable? You know, it's um, probably about 10 years ago. This is like, I kind of felt like this is what I wanted to do anyway. I didn't know it was YouTube. I didn't know it was podcasting. I didn't know it was social media. I didn't know that. But like all my professional life, well, for the first 20 years of my professional life, it was working in broadcast media, in television. I was doing that. And then I took a job for more money that was kind of parallel, but it wasn't in broadcast. So the things I made, I was, I was doing software development for television stations, you know, so I wasn't actually putting TV on the air, but I, I found I missed the... Um, I miss that feeling of making something that other people see, that lots of people see. Uh, and while YouTube is more narrow casting than broadcasting, I found when I started doing something like that, I got that that rush. I'm like, that's it. That's the thing. And, and it's been like seven years ago now that I decided maybe the thing is, I saw a lot of people on YouTube going, this is kid throwback. This is retro. This is old stuff. Like, wait, wait, wait. That's my stuff. That's not retro. This is just mine. It's retro to you, but... Right. Um, and I thought maybe there would be an audience of people that would like to hear about this old stuff from someone who was there when the old stuff was new stuff, rather than people going, well, I've never heard of this ColecoVision thing. They say it was good, but yeah, no, no, no. Let's stop and talk about that because it's super important. But unless you were there, I'm not disrespecting younger people. I'm just saying they don't have the same frame of reference right. that old farts do that were there. You know, I lived the first nine titles from Atari and that's all we had. And we loved it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, and they look at them and go, "These are all garbage." And I'm like, "Well, hold on, you know." So as I've grown, you always get people that hate you. They don't like the way your stupid face looks. You know, they can't wait to go. Um, actually, you made a mistake, and I'm like, "Go ahead, bring it on. That's engagement. Do another comment about how I'm stupid." <laughs> right. You know, but but I by and large, too. yeah, of course, of course, yeah. And, 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 and sometimes I'm like, "Let's leave this mistake in because I'll get 50 people telling me they hate it, and that's more engagement." You know. <laughs> But that's what YouTube yeah, wants, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what they tell me. Make mistakes, John. Yeah. Right. Leave it in. Leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> but it's by and large, I have found that the that is background noise compared to the audience that I'm finding, which is really embracing that. And I mm -hmm. think overall, the, the feedback that I get that's most valuable to me is is two kinds. One is when people say, um, hey, I love your enthusiasm and passion for this thing. And I'm like, thank you. I'm not faking it. I'm just enthusiastic about it. I'm glad it comes through. Because mm -hmm. when they say that, I'm like, I've seen plenty of YouTubers going, today we're going to talk about Contra. It's on NES. You're like, whoa, I get it. You know, and I'm, and the other one that, you know, that you get a lot is, that is, was very flattering. It started happening a couple of years ago when people go, there's a toy that's been out for two years and everyone's reviewed it. And they'll go, hey, John, when are you going to review the Rolling Thunder from my arcade? I'm like, who cares? It's been out for three years, you know, right. but I find that people want to see my take on it, which tells me that I, I have established some kind of a tiny voice that hmm. some people are wanting to hear what I think about it. And that's staggering to me because yeah. I'm just me. I'm just, I'm just the nerd that grew up and never gave up on the stuff he liked. And finally through, through force of nature that came back into good graces. It's no longer, you know, I'm not a nerd in a basement and I'm a nerd with a house, you know, I'm a totally different kind of nerd. So it's, <laughs> I, I love it. I love the journey. And yeah, it's anyway. 
Yeah, I could I could go on and on, but I, I I've, I've more than it. answered your question. I'm rambling. Sorry. No, I, I love hearing about it too. It's it's great. Um, you know, when you can be yourself and be authentic, and it's cool and not hidden in the closet anymore. There's something to be mm-hmm. said for that. And you yeah. have pride, like, well, it was worth it then. You know, all, mm-hmm. all those weird moments or whatever, people looking at me or judging me, and you know, so you know, and it's a uh, yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, geeks weren't cool. You got beat exactly. up for a geek or a nerd. You got mm-hmm. beat up in the street and just, you know, whatever. Got te- bullied. I was bullied severely because I was a geek. And now now I see the geeks are almost kind of celebrated. It's weird. You know, it's 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 different yep. from the world that we came from, you know. But I am I embrace it now and it's part of me and I don't, I don't care. And and I really didn't care back then either. It was just hard dealing with all the it, yeah, it was just bullying and all that, you know, yeah. And it's yeah. yeah. But it's it, you know, we did you know, a was, I was say we did a podcast uh, episode a few weeks back where we talked about uh, some Gen X era movies that people say could never be made today. Mm-hmm. You know, we went through like Porky's and Blazing Saddles and stuff like that. <laughs> but one of them we talked about, yeah, right. Uh, and it took place in Florida, where I am. It was, of course, naturally. But but one of them we talked about was Revenge of the Nerds, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. there's plenty in that to talk about. But one of the <laughs> things we talked about why not to make it today is. Like younger people wouldn't get it. Like, what? Why are the nerds being bullied? Right. Because nerds <laughs> rule the world now. They're the IT experts. They're the guys you call when you're in trouble with your computer. They're and and they're celebrated, like you said. And so when we talked about it, we're like, well, if we're going to green light it today, it would have to flip. It had to be like you know, revenge of the revenge of the Popular jocks kid. after they got out of high school, fell on their faces because they had no skills, right? Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's you're right. We, we, I say we, all of us, you and me, and the audience watching that like this kind of nerdy crap. It, it, you could at any point, you know, you know, you know, when you get adulthood, put away your childish toys, all childish things, and whatever. And I just didn't get the memo, you know, and, mm-hmm. and you didn't either. And it, mm-hmm. again, it kind of came around finally to where it was like, Thank hey, God. those of you didn't get the memo. Good news, it's now in in vogue. So yeah, I wish I had known that before. I lost all my NES stuff in storage. Oh no, kidding. Oh 19, man! Oh, 1990 or something. Oh, I lost oh, the, all, all the games. The, I had all the original games in the box that I lost. Was my, that, so my parents taught me great 25. lessons to. It's like uh, oh yeah yeah. My parents were teaching me great lessons. To like well, if you want the Atari computer, well, we need to help raise money, so you need to sell your Atari 2600. I'm like that makes great sense. Yeah. And now I'm like, but I had Crazy Climber. I'm like oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I was you know, one of those all kids that stuff I would land, and I would I would upgrade my system to the next one. So mm-hmm. I I, I took, took my NES to Funko Land. I don't know if you remember that that they I don't think mm-hmm. GameStop still does it maybe, but you would trade in your system for credit towards the next one. And I I did that until the N sixty four and after. And so mm-hmm. I don't ha- I didn't I had to recollect. I didn't have all my original stuff anymore. I, I was a trader in because I was I was kind of a poor kid when I was really mm-hmm. in. So. Uh, but it was, yeah. So I'm like, damn it. You know, here we are 10 cartridges, 10 videos and a thousand dollars later. And we've completed this Atari 50th anniversary Atari XP collector series. Now, while this series overall was something that I'm very glad that I purchased and am generally happy with, not everything was a shining beacon of awesomeness. There were some things that were just dead on misses. Uh, in this video, what I'm going to do is recap these 10 boxes, these 10 cartridges and their contents. And I have eight awards to give, some best of, some worst of, plus I'm gonna run down my dream lineup of what 10 cartridges I would have chosen for this series. So while I pull these 10 boxes off the shelf, take them over to the table and prepare for the awards ceremonies, you watch this quick message from our sponsor and we'll get started right after this. I have an interesting question I would just thought of. Um, okay. I well, and and the first thing I wanted to say was you said you were in broadcast journalism. I was a newspaper journalist for a while. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm 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 like more of the writing side of it than the broadcast side, um, which is strange because none of my stuff, um, and none of my stuff is scripted or anything. But <laughs> if it was it might be better? <laughs> so you know. <laughs> Cause I do a news show and you can't really script breaking news, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just, you know, I have to come out with it hard hitting, like right away. I can't wait. You know, I mean, the only competitor, you know, I have is bacon ice cream productions in that regard and getting stuff out that quickly, you know, <laughs> as far as new, new news goes, you know, mm-hmm. but it's uh, you know, it's, but 
Um, I, I have a question I thought of when I was thinking about you. Mm-hmm. What what system or systems did you miss out on a kid that you look back and wish you hadn't? Because I know oh, yeah. everything yeah. now. But back when you're like, I didn't know about the Vectrex until a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And and now I have one. I just I, I'm just like, this is awesome, you know. So <laughs> is there something that you look back and think that you would you you would have enjoyed as a kid maybe that you didn't know about or couldn't afford or whatever? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And 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 I kind of already mentioned it. So first of all, like Atari and a television were like a Coke and Pepsi, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. Atari was Coke by far, you know. Yeah. And I look back on television and I don't I I knew it was there. I probably could have begged for it. I didn't want it because Atari had everything I wanted. And when I saw on television, I'm like, I mean, it's fine, but it's not that much better than what I'm doing. So from my young perspective, mm-hmm. um, but the, the, the rich kid, Mikey Spears, he was the kid who had everything, right? And he had the Vectrex. I played it at his house. He had the ColecoVision. I played it at his house. And since I'm a big Donkey Kong dork, that was like, wait a minute, this is on your TV? And as I've just put my just ankle deep in the ColecoVision world, I'm finding all of these, like it's mostly arcade ports and they're mostly incredible. Mm-hmm. Like they're not arcade perfect, they're interpretations, but they're leagues ahead. I mean, bananas. I feel like it's four generations past the VCS. It feels like, yeah, because they made such a leap there. And uh, so I have low key started collecting ColecoVision. Like I have, I have a ColecoVision. I've half done a video of me restoring it. Uh, I have the module number one, so you can play twenty six hundred cartridges on it. Uh, it's I've started collecting cartridges whenever I, I'm around that I find them and stuff. And it's and but the weird thing is when I see them, it's not like oh yeah I remember that. It's like I've never seen that, and I can't wait to plug that in and see what it looks like because it's. It's a little bit of time travel, right? I can go back and go, well, A, now I can be the kid that can have one because I could afford one or could. When, um, but now I'm finding games that I didn't know very well. Like even television games, I kind of have seen them all. But yeah. CV games are just, that was the one that I know I would have been just bananas about if I'd had it. And I just it, just, it was unreachable. I never asked. And it's not like, you know, it, it, today we're like, yeah, I've got a PS5 and an Xbox One S and a Switch. No, back then you had... A video game and once right. you had one right in my house you had one there was no need to have two <laughs> they yeah. didn't understand it was it was like a commodity like you know like like tissue paper or milk you have some you don't need more you know right but it, it wasn't it was a totally different beast but that's so true they, they, they didn't they didn't grow up with that so they didn't realize how important the differences were yeah yeah and also you know we had less choices back in the day it was mm-hmm. you know the the you know atari was the mammoth in the room and then, yeah, I heard about ColecoVision, but I, I, I mean, no one I knew had one. And mm-hmm. then I heard about it on television, but no one I knew had one. If everyone had Atari, Atari, Atari. Yeah, so yeah. that's all I knew and heard about. I, I, I heard the names, but I was like, eh. And then Dad would say, "Well, this Christmas you only get a few games. So which ones mm-hmm. do you want?" And so every year for my birthday and for Christmas, I got games when I was a little kid, like seven, mm-hmm. eight, nine. So I really had to get ones I wanted, like Pitfall. And I didn't, I mean, I had an allowance, but it was only like a certain amount a week. And I couldn't, I didn't save up. I was a kid, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, later you're on. You're buying gum and, you know, paddle balls and crap, yeah, right? <laughs> right. And then I I would have my grandparents take me to Walmart. This is in East Texas in the mid 80s or early to mid 80s. And I would say, just got allowance. Um, but can you buy this for me? Because mom and dad don't buy me a lot of toys. Mm. So I did that with all my relatives and I, I, I got Atari games that way, <laughs> you know, you know yeah. please, I, I don't get that much. I'll tell you what, what I think is really fascinating <laughs> is everybody talks about the great video game crash in North America, the great video game crash in North America. And yes, Atari buckled. Yes, they were mismanaged, but I, I've always felt that while the market crashed, it actually created now that all these games are $2, $2.99. And they're in the bargain bin out front of KB with the, you know, with the robotic dogs out there because they don't care if you steal them. It opened the door to kids who previously couldn't afford $40 games who can now buy three or four $3 games Mm -hmm. and experience games they never would have. And so it's that it, the crash itself had it never happened ideal, but the fact that it did, I think that was laying foundation for in 85 when NES kind of came in 
that we did while well, there was no business model for games we didn't forget about them we were still playing the living crap out of them there just wasn't a good reason for people to publish them because there was no money in it at the moment so right. like you you were one of those kids who were asking your grandparents and now mid 80s they're not 40 and 50 bucks right they're mm -hmm. Brand new up. in the shrink wrap, four ninety nine for the best ones ever, and mm -hmm. it meant you had access to a game that you previously would not have ever been able to touch until it was you know ragged out and used, and you got it at a thrift store, and now yeah. you could. And that I think the crash actually, I think it was actually the, the dip that set that ramp that allowed us to launch back into where we are now, this multi trillion dollar business that's bigger than movies and music put together. Yeah. Exactly. And I always tell people, you know, well, I have some people that, that will, will comment on my channel or, or just talk to me and, you know, in my real life and, um, and say, you know, you talk to people in real life. Wait a minute. <laughs> I try. <laughs> oh, that's, that's nice. <laughs> but they're like, you know, um, well, uh, you know, it's subpar. And I'm like, well, if it wasn't for Atari, we probably wouldn't have what we have today. And I have mm -hmm. to explain to them, you know, about, you know, how Activision was formed and a magic out of Atari and third party mm -hmm. system and all this. And, you know, there weren't any rules back then. It was the wild West. So Atari was winging it and yeah, they made a lot of mistakes, but, and I'll tell people what, what company that's who's now it's been several companies, whatever, but what company mm -hmm. that's been out, you know, that's been around for over 50 years in the video game industry hasn't, hasn't made mistakes. Most of them are dead you know, because they made mistakes mm -hmm. or gone. It's gone. So it's, you know, I mean, the fact that it's outlasted means the importance of that brand, you know, it, you know, it's like Coca-Cola is going to go on forever, you know, mm -hmm. Ari's going to yeah. go forever, you know, and different people are going to own it because I mean, how many people own the same company for 50 years, you know, in the video game industry. So, Thank you. you know, <laughs> maybe Nintendo, <laughs> but that I'm, I'm sure that's even changed. So, uh, Man, listen, I hear all the hate on Atari all the time. The, the, the number one thing I hear when people are mad at Atari, and I don't prejudge anybody, but I feel like they're regurgitating sound bites they've heard. And yeah. they hear, Atari is not, it's a, it's a ghost to its former self. It's changed hands so many times. It's nothing, it's not the same company at all. And I go, what you just said, let's assume there was never a crash. Let's assume that they never sold themselves to, you know, infograms or whoever the hell, they, you know, whatever. There would be in a completely different management today than there would be. There'd have been three different management systems, right? That have gone mm -hmm. a cycle through. <laughs> and now it's the team that is running it now under Wade Rosen is actually trying to get back what they lost. <laughs> yeah. <Excuse me. clears throat> trying to get, I'm so excited. I'm swallowing spit. They're trying to get back what they <laughs> lost because they know what the reputation Atari has is. And look, they're throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. I'm not buying NFTs and crazy stuff. But I'm on board with the stuff that they're doing, and I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at the current people because they're not the old people. Right. I'm happy that the current people are trying to get back what the old people gave away. You yeah. know? So I'm happy with yeah. it. We're, who, who's running Atari now? They're not making all the right calls, but I'm happy yeah. that they're pushing the right direction, you know? Right, yeah, exactly. And, you know, um, I, I recently kind of had something happen to me. I was... Well, I mean, since 2016, really, or 2006. So when I joined Atari Age in 2006, um, I was just kind of poking around about Atari. You know, I was still a little interested. I wasn't quite to where I am now, but, um, it, you know, I was a little interested over the years, you know. And I went on there. Atari I was very curious. Yeah. I was just <laughs> hated on by people in the forums and trashed mm. and people were rude and mean. So it just kind of scared me away. This is a long story short. So I went back on there over the years and even had the same kind of experience or just kind of, it didn't seem very active. And then I went on recently and I don't know how the site works. So I post a status update with one of my new videos in it. And man, I get harped on by 20, 30 people. And it's mm. just like, damn. And I was pretty much almost banned off the site. My stuff was all deleted and I had a really bad experience and, you know, um, it's what I kind of found on there is if you're not, and this isn't now, this isn't with true with everyone. I'm just saying it's a, probably a small part, but, um, uh, you know, to to some people on the side, if you're not kind of part of the old boys club, you kind of don't exist. And that's kind of what I faced because I, I like new and old Atari. I like old Atari and I like new Atari and you're probably in the same boat. 
So I feel kind of stuck in the middle a little bit. I've got these people saying, you know, oh, that's not the Atari that I knew. And I was like, <laughs> well, that's great. I'm glad it actually evolved, you know, or whatever mm-hmm. changed. I wouldn't even say evolved, but changed because you have to change as you to be this old, you know. So, you know, but it's uh, I did face kind of some of that new kind of anti Atari dislike, I would say. I would even say hey, just kind of a dislike. And so whenever Atari bought Atari age recently, a, a lot of people, you know, were in that kind of in that sector were saying, well, we hope Atari doesn't change Atari age. And, and, and my comment was, I hope they do change the forums because the forums can be toxic. And that's yeah. my experience. I don't know. Have you had experiences with that kind of loving new and old Atari? I barely, I barely post on Atari age. Rarely. I, I only did like if it, so recently, remember when, um, I think it was earlier this year, they, there were a couple of new games that got discovered. Sonar got discovered. That was the, the stereo game. And there was, there was another one right after that, that I'm, um, like a quirk or, or smack or what it was like. It was the ball game. Anyway, point is, um, I only posted there because people were talking about it. And, uh, I, I said, Hey, I, I'm so happy that you did this. I want to show you that I gave you a video for it. Uh, that I, that I reported on it. And in that case, like I even posted, I'm like, let's see if they get, you know, you know, no promoting yourself on this or whatever, but I didn't get that luckily. Uh, but I, also I just do it very, very gingerly and very rarely do I go on there. I read it a lot. It's a great resource. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, yeah, yeah. I tend to not it's so look, I like to find my tribe and stick with my tribe. And I didn't grow up with those, those people mostly. And so like, I have a great discord server around Gen X grown up that attracts the people that love stuff the way that I love stuff, you know, that they, mm-hmm. they're not judgmental and that kind of thing. So that's where I focus my energies Yeah, is I found, I found the hundred or so people that really dig what, what I'm, what I'm doing mm-hmm. and they're not yes men, you know, they're not like everything you do, John is great. It's just, they're open-minded, you know, and the, the, right. nobody's judgmental. So uh, yeah. nobody to, to a degree, everybody is, I guess, but it's just a great place. So I find that my chatting with people outlet is in on discord and I don't spend that time on Atari age, but yeah. like you, you know, I saw all the same stuff. I posted an article, uh, a, a video when Atari age was purchased and, you know, it was just, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And people are like, I, this is the end of this. This is the end of this. And, you know, doomsday people are rarely right. And when you, when you just vehemently say it's something absolute, this is the end of homebrew. Really? <laughs> you believe yeah. that? Or that's just a sensational thing you'd like to put out there to have people argue with you. Right. Is it going to change? Sure. Maybe Atari will legitimize it, you know, and bring it in, you know? Right. You know, we see they're, they're publishing Save Mary, for God's sake. Exactly. That's never had a physical release. That's exactly. cool. Yeah. You know? And I kind of saw this happening on the VCS side. Um, I saw homebrew games coming over on the VCS constantly. Um, and I was like, well, this is like I never played Tower of Rubble. Oh, my God. I love it. Um, and it was, just, I, it's like, I played it my whole life and I was like, Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> like that's how much I love it. And that was a homebrew that came over. John Hancock has had homebrews that have come over and, and some other ones by, um, uh, I can't think of their name right now. Like, um, Oh gosh, I can't, I, I don't want to sit. Well, think Champ games does some amazing stuff. I like all their stuff that they've done is really good. Uh, it was a circus convoy that uh, oh, one yeah. of the kitchens put out. That thing yes. is, I could like, can you imagine? Have you played circus convoy? You have, yes. right? Uh-huh. Would your mind have been blown if you had that in 84? I'm like, are I'm you kidding me? Myself. This is an adventure <laughs> with an inventory, with things that look like the things are supposed to be. And the physics were, it was pitfall physics, basically. It was like, it was like a cross between pitfall, like Keystone caper physics. Like the mm-hmm. jump physics is beautiful. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the fact that people are still making new games for this console tells you that the console is not going anywhere. Homebrew is not going anywhere. Yeah, it might change. But, you know, I have a relationship with Atari. And when I write to them and go, hey, what about blah, blah, blah? They go, how can we help you? I'm like, wow. And they respond faster than some other companies that are way smaller than Atari. Mm-hmm. I, right. I Maybe it's because they have people dedicated to talk to influencers, uh, which I use that term 
offhandedly, I don't believe I'm influencing anybody, but that's the bubble they put you in when right. you, you yeah. have, you know, some followers, right? Right. Uh, but they have people that liaise with, with us <laughs> that can help you out where other people maybe don't, but I love the, I love, I love the attitude that they have, at least outwardly, they could look, they could be down in the basement plotting our demise and the end of Atari if they wanted to be. I mean, they don't know that, but what I see outwardly and how they interact with me and what they do in the public, you know, isn't it cool? Every three or four weeks, there's a new Atari game announced. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, I thought and, that would never happen. <laughs> and 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 I mean, sometimes John, it's I'm not kidding. Here lately, it's been three a week. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And because uh, I I report on them as they come out, and mm -hmm. sometimes I'm I'm like, okay, it's been a slow week. This is nice. I'm getting it to relax. And then suddenly, <laughs> three big like two games are announced, and some acquisitions are announced. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Got to get out of bed or whatever. Got to, you know, and, and when I get out of bed in the morning, I, I look at my iPad first thing and I'm in the mountain time zone. So I'm, I'm already behind the East, the East coast. And so when I, I, you know, wake up at eight, it's like, you know, nine or 10 over there. So a lot of times games have already come out. So I will run downstairs, make coffee, run in here, <laughs> put water on my face and, and then do a news line. Cause I'm like, I got to get it out there quickly and I have to go to work. So I go ahead and record it and then I edit it a little bit. Then I go to work and I publish it at work usually, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. just, it, it's kind of run by the seat of your pants operation for sure. <laughs> you know, it's, but yeah. no, I, I couldn't keep up with what you're doing. I mean, what you're doing and I see what you're doing. I'm like, well, I don't need to do that. Let's just let people find you right. Mm -hmm. Daily topical on time breaking kind of changes. That's great. You know, mm -hmm. I'll take, I'll pick it up two days later and go. So here's the thing. If you haven't heard about it and I'll have, and I only do them if I have, I think something to contribute because I'm not doing yeah. news. I think when I do it, I'm just doing editorials on right, right. here's what I think it means right. for blah, blah, blah. Whereas you're reporting it as it's happening, you know? Yeah. Uh, which is very cool. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause I, you know, I've got people telling me stuff and they're like, don't, don't, don't tell anyone that who told you this. I go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that is, so, but but there sources are, report. <laughs> there are a lot of people that are trustworthy though. And, and I want to say are very loyal to Atari and will make sure it's okay to say something before they say it. So I don't want to say mm -hmm. that sound weird because most of the people I uh, talk to like 99.9% .9 will check and make sure it's okay. So, but just FYI, um, yep. our time's about to run out. Do you want to take like a five minute break and come back? If you need a break, I'm fine. I mean, I, I'll often sit and record shows for two, two and a half hours sometimes. Oh, okay. So I'm okay. I'm going to, well, I'm going to stop it because it's going to end, but then we'll just click okay. on the link and restart it. Um, I okay. got a phone call from the garage. I just want to check it real quick and then I'll, I'll, sure. I'll join. Okay. It again, okay. Yep. I will just right sit back. here and wait. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ever since this year's CES, I've been giving a lot of coverage to my arcade, in particular, my arcade's forthcoming Atari branded products like that pocket player and the game station plus. But I got an email from one of our viewers named Frank, who was asking if I intended to review the At Games offering, the 50th anniversary Atari flashback unit. Well, I responded that I really didn't know that much about At Games. I don't follow them that closely. But then it turns out Frank wasn't the only person to ask. Several other people had dropped me a line in comments saying, John, we would love to see your take on this new flashback unit. So I dropped At Games a line and they were generous enough to send along this review copy of the At Games Atari 50th Anniversary Flashback Gold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where's the button? There it is. Okay. Sorry about that. What's the good word on your car? Uh, not good news. I mean, no, no good word. Yeah, they're kind of playing with me, unfortunately. So it's been one of those situations. Mm. It's I have a warranty, kind of a recall on my car, but my car is giving me issues from that recall right now, and they're all out of loaner cars, and I've got two jobs to get to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah. I need to hear, so I've been talking to them for three or four days and they're being <laughs> really weird with me. So it doesn't look good. So I'm kind of dealing with the personal life thing right now with my car, but. Uh, Sorry about that. Yeah, it's annoying. Um, anyway, <laughs> throwing that out the window <laughs> right for right now. Um, <laughs> that's a problem for tomorrow, right? That's yeah. A, yeah. Well, that's I'm, no problem for right now. After we do this, I'm, I'm going to make some phone calls, but. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it is what it is. Um, so yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about, um, 
some some uh, things Atari's have been have been. Sorry, let me start over. Do you want to talk a little bit about some things that Atari um, has put out recently that you're excited about, or things that you think people should look at again in your own mind? Well, so there's been a lot. There's been a lot there's been, and there's been hit or miss for me. Uh, and I don't mean good or bad. I mean, whether or not it interests me directly, you know, uh, like for example, they just put out days of doom. Very interesting. Not my kind of game. Same, but same with me. But the yeah. reason I'm, I'm happy it's out there is, is it's one of those things I talked about with Atari is like, yeah, they're doing berserk recharged. Yeah. They're doing, you know, lunar lander with a story mode but they're also trying new things. They're not just mm -hmm. going, all we know is what we already have. Existing IP is all we can do. Um, I think, so to that end, I think uh, Berserk Recharged is, is just announced and we've seen some videos for it. Uh, first, it's, it's I'll call it the first real thing they've done with the license since they got it from Stern. Yeah, they released Berserk uh, in the VCS store and yeah, they, they're selling a cart with a 2600 plus that has a voice synthesis, which by the way, I think started as a homebrew, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And yes. now they adopted it, right? So that's cool. Uh, but Berserk Recharged is Yars Recharged was a dual stick shooter, kind of, sort of. I mean, you controlled it that way, but um, this looks like a like I could see people that love Robotron loving Berserk Recharged. Mm -hmm. And I know people that love Berserk saying, look at all the extra things, like the like you could. Just in the trailer, like you have to guess, like power ups, obviously it's recharged. Uh, doors are opening and evil auto is as big as the damn screen. And so there's some <laughs> exciting stuff in there for people yeah. that like berserk, but who like me don't play it a lot. I respect its place. And I remember, like, I can remember the machine I played it on in the arcade in Winter Haven, Florida, but wasn't one of my favorites because it was so simple. It was so <laughs> rudimentary. The right. speech synthesis was amazing, but it felt very samey. Mm -hmm. And this is a this is a place where I think Atari, and I'm guessing because Sneaky Boxes seems to be a really great developer, but other ones like they they tread on like your asteroids and your breakout and things that people know so well and are so ingrained and their complexities are there. Berserk is so rudimentary. Now they can layer the things on top of it and it's not damaging Berserk. Mm -hmm. All you need for Berserk is, look, I need robots to shoot. <laughs> I need a maze. I need evil auto and some speech synthesis. Those are the things I got to have. And all that's going to be there. And so I think that is, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. You were talking about days of doom because I feel the same way. I'm, I'm not a big fan of those um, turn-based kind of mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. RPG games. There are a lot of people that are. And so I, I'm for that reason, just like you, I'm glad it's out because just because I don't like it, I'm not a gatekeeper. I know you're not either. So mm -hmm. people that are going to like everything, you know, so, and, and, and those different likes need to be addressed on the system. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. If they're, so some people aren't going to like berserk recharged, right? Right. Or maybe they're younger people who like these more turn-based little anime cartoony things. Great. That's out there too. And yep. everybody that buys it and plays it and enjoys it is supporting the company that I like to keep doing the things they're doing. So, yeah. Yep. In fact, we we did a couple of live streams on it. We loved had the opportunity to give away some keys. Again, Atari is amazing with us. They gave us some keys to give away. Uh, it just and yeah, it just it, the company itself is doing good things in general, right? Again, there's some weird stuff. I don't know if we need an Atari hotel. I want to go, but I don't know if we need one. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't heard a lot about that. I, I, I did yeah. some digging around about it for my channel recently just to kind of see what was out there because I didn't know a lot about it myself. And um, and the last thing Wade said about it in an interview, I guess, a year ago, he was saying that, you know, it's still valid, but it's got a long kind of a arch to get to where they want to go. To get there, yeah. And, yeah, and apparently there's an office in Arizona or something or I don't know, but there's, I've saw a little bit about it, but not much. It doesn't seem like and you could easily anywhere. fall into that. Uh, what was the big, uh, the big star Wars hotel that Disney did that yeah. they have since closed. If you make it too narrow <laughs> and too expensive, which is what they did. It's you gotta be a super fan and you gotta be wealthy. Mm -hmm. And that barrier was unsurmountable. They tried to lower the price and make it anyway. And, yeah. and so, you know, take your time and find out. I, I think it's fine, but yeah. Yeah, it it just seems kind of like a yeah, 
I don't I don't I don't know if it's gonna materialize let's just say <laughs> but yeah yep. so um but yeah it's I do think that they have they are, have some things going on like that plus the nft stuff um just like you were talking about um i did go in and buy one with a friend because i wanted to see what yeah. what happened when you did what's like yeah. Atari club so i reported on it and i wanted to report on it and say what's what this was about to people mm-hmm. and um you know i i after going down that road i still agree that they should have started out with web 2.0 which is what they they're going to now because they started out with web 3.0, which is crypto and all this and with mm-hmm. the blockchain underpinning. And um, if they would have started out with web 2.0 and then said, this is an optional thing, I think that would have been better. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I am glad now that anyone can join um, Atari club because in the beginning, it was just that, that first web three iteration. Mm-hmm. That gets real confusing to people our age, right? We're like, what? <laughs> you know, I have no, no you've already lost me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is it involves a bank account and it seems weird to me. You know, right. it has some value, but it's only value we agree upon, which people argue, well, that's what every money is. But I'm like, yeah, but mine works. You know, <laughs> I can hold yeah. it. I can see it. Yeah. It's right. Different. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. I feel like it's almost a generational thing. It's a different generation's thing going on that we don't quite know about, but it's interesting. But I, I do like how they've cut, they, they are now letting anyone join and anyone can join. They haven't launched the official site yet, but um, it's yeah, interesting, but yeah. So what do you think about the Atari 2600 plus? What do I think about it? Um, well, I'm, of course I'm interested um it's it until we learn more about it it feels like an official me too it's people have done that over and over and over the retron 77 probably the best example um which has its own problems but it's it's fine it plays real cartridges and it does what it does it has hdmi and frankly it has you could do like fry on the back of it you got all kinds of cool stuff with it Mm -hmm. but I mean, because, you know, I, I think it's going to, it'll do fine. Look, I'm the, I'm the dummy that bought the all 10 Atari 50 cartridges, right? So and if I just say, well, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> for people to buy them because people are going to buy them because it's Atari and they want it. And yeah. it's the official version. Um, they were smart to add 7,800, but as you see on, you need to do videos of anything, you review something and nobody wants to hear what it does. They want to tell you all the stuff they wish it did. That it doesn't. Well, I wish they had 5,200. Right. I wish it did this. I wish it did this. Uh, I right. really, I understand where they're going. I wish it had been, I wish it had been hardware. I wish it had just been new boards with modern ships. That's literally a 2,600. And, or, or again, maybe it's a 7,800 is what, before I, when I did my video on it, before I read all the details and the footnotes, you have to expand three collapse things where they disclose what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, maybe it has 7,800 guts. That would explain why it's playing that in 2,600. Wouldn't that be cool to be a reliable brand new, I don't have to recap this damn thing, 2,600 that you could purchase. Uh, I'm disappointed that it wasn't that. Um but so many people are doing the pure emulation route. Like I think it would be a mistake for them to put an SD card slot in it because then they are literally a me too of everything that's already been there. Right. They should say we are for physical media. That's what this is. And that then differentiates them from every, from the, the game mm-hmm. station pros and from the retrons right. and from the flashbacks. And mm. They're doing that already. The only difference is you have the Atari license and can say, we make it. They're not even right. making it. Play on's making it, but we get it, right? So, mm. and I, I wish it had been hardware. Yeah, a- and Atari is making their own XP carts, so they want you to buy those games as well. Of course. So yeah. that that's probably also part of it is that they don't want to eat away at their own ecosystem. But you know, um, I'm sure well, something. Total modern, sense. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm, I'm sure it's going to happen, but um, I'm excited about it because it's it's a uh, new harbor put out by Atari. You know. I mean, and here's the story I tell people, and I'm sure you've had this happen because I, I see him behind you. Um, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> you're, you're, you're like, what are you looking at? Uh, <laughs> Could I like be anything. <laughs> I like that little, is that what they planted the apes or a shrunken head back there? What is that? It, it is. Yeah. This guy, that's, uh, 
that was the DVD box set of Planet of the Apes that included all that. the movies <laughs> and the and the and the filmation cartoon was in it too. And in his back, you the Velcro. Oh. But after I got the discs out and ripped them, I'm like, he's got to sit up there on the shelf. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of that Chaka guy in Land of the Lost. Yep. You know, Chaka. Yep. Remember? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I was like, there's Chaka up there. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, when I got the I got the unreleased game set, the three game set, and um, for yep. Atari XP. And when I got them, you know, it wouldn't work on the Retron. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't work on a VCS, a 2600 that I had. It didn't yep. work on another 2600. It worked on the 2600 Junior that I have. Mm-hmm. That's and what I, I play along. Like, yeah. I was like, that's weird because I have all these 2600s. And then I realized, well, I'm I'm like putting this expensive cartridge in this 40-year-old system with dust in it. And I need to clean it out. <laughs> I need to, and I had to do that first. And so I'm glad they do have this new system coming out because the only way to play these XP games is by using a 40-year-old system right now, right? For most people, probably, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have a lot of other hardware to play it on, just those. So it's nice to me they have a new hardware coming out to play those carts on that are expensive because I would hate to spend a hundred dollars on a cartridge and had to put it in a 40 year old system with, <laughs> dust. you know what I mean? So it's, that's kind of the cool thing about it with me is, is that it's newer hardware to play this stuff on that's coming out. And I think it's probably also going to be able to play some homebrew games. So e- even though Atari hasn't said, um, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things, you know, you also hear is, you know, it's it's not a certain type of emulation and from my understanding that, that would cost like a hundred two hundred dollars to do that that's right it's, yep. you know, it, it's not feasible to sell something to the mass market with that price point it's just not yep no one's gonna buy so it you probably people you know so it's it did have to yeah. be cheaper you know so it's you know you i probably like- hear this a lot and, and i hear this a lot too i'm curious if you hear this so every time i review something Right. Like just to, the fact today, before we got on this, this podcast, we started talking, I was answering a comment with this very same answer, but it was like, I, I reviewed this Pac-Man toy that you hold in your hand. And the comment that I see over and over is like, enough is enough. I have a hundred ways to play Pac-Man. I don't need another one. You know, in the 2600, I have six 2600s. I have a heavy sixer. I have a Vader. I have a junior. Why do I need this? I'm like, okay, hold down Hoss. We are unique. We are not the general populace. Mm. I, and I, I said, walk outside. The first dozen people you meet, ask them if they have a way to play Pac-Man in their house right now. Mm-hmm. Random people. And I'm willing to bet you get more no's than yeses. Mm-hmm. There's still a market. It's not market saturated. Now, granted, do they care? Do they want to play Pac-Man? That's They're not really a customer. But if they want to, the millions and millions and millions of people, hundreds of millions of people out there, how many of them actually understand, well, I can download MAME and I can find the ROM and I understand how to configure it. And I, right. that's great if you're a hobbyist and I get it's not for you. And honestly, it's not for me either. Mm-hmm. My job is not to say it's right for you. My job is to show you what it does and doesn't do. So you right. can decide if it's not for you. Make so the person right. that's complaining, I can already play Pac-Man. Perfect. This video helped you know it's not for you, but right. there's hundreds of thousands of other people for whom it is right for. And just because they put out one three years ago doesn't mean there's no need for it because they don't make those anymore and not everybody has one yet. So mm-hmm. the 2600 yeah. plus is like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have 12 VCSs, but not everybody has 12 VCSs or even one right. and would like <laughs> to play those old games. That's and. And when you said that, that's that's the only thing I I I like think was a big miss on it was it can play 70, 100 games, but it doesn't come with the controller. Yeah, so they already the said thing. they're planning on a controller for that, but they should have announced it at, at the outset. Too. I heard that too that they're planning on a combo set like the paddle one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I feel like they should announce it now because I I feel like people aren't buying it because they don't think it's gonna. You know what I mean? Yeah. The reason not to get it for some people, and if they really want to sell it, I think that that needs to be out there right now, like, mm-hmm. like or, yeah, it's good idea. or I mean, coming soon, you know, just mm-hmm. ease mm-hmm. people's fears that they're not because you know, I mean, yes, you can go on eBay right now and buy one for thirty bucks for sure, a, a pain line controller, um, <laughs> as they call it, but um, you know, who's going to want to do that? You know, so it's you know, we we've all become such a lazy culture 
that you know that's all then it's the other way around to what you just said like, now, okay. I'm, now i'm plugging now i'm plugging a 40 year old controller into a brand new piece of equipment that you right. don't want to do, right yeah. yes and it's being played by a 40 50 year old person probably <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly yep <laughs> yeah um but yeah i'm i'm like glad it's coming out um i i feel like it, it might be a better solution than the the uh, play maji situation they were talking about with the mm. you know with the I, I i can't remember the emulator and then the whatever you know um but um i just feel like it's uh it like you said it's kind of in the vein of the the super nintendo mini or whatever the uh mm-hmm. nes yeah. mini whatever and i think it's great i i think they should do it um especially since they have these new carts coming out i mean mm-hmm. my my like question to atari was what am i supposed to play this on um existing hardware w- well but what if i didn't have it you know so mm-hmm. you know i mean you i mean you literally have to go on ebay and get it or 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 buy a retron and and they're not at every store you go to like you have to know where to go to order it so yep or gamestop or somewhere but yeah it's just uh i uh, feel like it's a good solution for the mass market and 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 i feel like that's kind of who, who that's who they need to also appeal to is just sales right is is mm-hmm. is is you know what's going to sell the most if they had a 2600 plus that was four hundred dollars they might sell a few hundred or whatever yeah. a thousand i don't know but if they have something out that's 130 dollars they're going to fly off the shelves and th- and that's just how it is you know and yep. as sad as that is that's that's where it has to lie and a, and a company's responsibility is production cost versus what they're selling it for so they have to make money at it you know it's got to be profitable so i get it um and i mean mostly i'm excited about it um as Do you I think said, they would be I well advised the controller could... information was out there already. You know, oh, for, yeah. For I agree. Um, but... Yeah. Do you think they would be well advised to cast a broader net? I really do because I think right yeah. now it's on their website and you, if you are already a hobbyist and fan, you know about it. Mm-hmm. But again, walk outside and talk to 12 people and they go, what's a 2,600 plus. Mm-hmm. Those are the people that might more want one because the average consumer they don't want to figure out how to configure and build something. They want to go on to plug it in. I want to put a yeah. cartridge in it. I, I want to do that thing I did when I was 12, mm-hmm. you know, and like right can, away. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. This can yeah. give them that, but I, the limited production run already. I know review units are going to be like hen's teeth. If anybody gets one, they are in the absolute top tier because we've been told, yeah, we'll try, but don't hold your breath. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so we know about it, but, if they could get it out, you know, get it in Target or you know, at least, yeah, get it somewhere, get it in GameStop or something where at least people who are not rabid Atari fans who are going to know about it by osmosis can find out about it and get it because they would sell them there too. Mm-hmm. In my recent video reviews for the new 2023 handheld and tabletop releases from my arcade, the comment section has been full of viewers wishing for added features like connection to the TV, Atari 7800 and 5200 games, Atari arcade games, expandability, a paddle controller. Well, listen, if you were one of those commenters, I have good news for you. All of your wishes have been granted and the name of the genie is the Atari Game Station Pro. And we're gonna uncork this bottle right after this. And it's, you know, it's interesting you say that because I know Atari signed with the PR agency a few months ago and that uh, deals with like TV and movies and commercials. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I, I think that might be why, I, I don't, I'm just guessing, is to kind of promote in like movies and commercials. And um, if they would have it in a, in a movie, that'd be great, or a, a popular TV show, the a family mm-hmm. 2600 plus or you know just here and there uh mm-hmm. you know kind of integrate it into the culture a little bit you know um yep. but uh, yeah they do need to cast a wider net i also know that that's expensive if you don't have the connection of course you know right. well that's that's more inventory that's more risk that's more and i mean they're buying stuff up like crazy but I, they're making they're making baby steps right they're not they're not biting off more than they could chew they're not trying to boil the ocean let's let's chip away let's get these m network titles all right settle mm-hmm. down all right let's uh let's go after night dive all right we got that clear all right. you know they're not buying the world they're doing little bits right. and that would be probably risk averse to putting out that much inventory because we all know what happened last time atari put out too much inventory that people didn't want 
it got yeah. buried, right? So yes, <laughs> and there was a point as well when you know because I gotten I did a video on this on, on my on my main show BCB. I was talking about Atari calculators. They had calculators out for like 10, 15 years. And they, you know, and I've got a few of them. And um, they had out weird things, you know, like uh, fanny packs and, you know, jackets. And even back in the day. <laughs> um, so just putting their, their, like, their, like, brand out there. And they did put on a lot of stuff. And um, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's cool. Um, you, you know, it helps build that kind of popular culture thing, you mm -hmm. know to have an Atari jacket or a fanny pack, you know, but it's, you know, uh, you know, I mean, they've always kind of dabbled in that space. I'm, I'm totally cool with it. I, I don't, you know, it's, it's great. And I'll, and I like a lot of it. So, <laughs> you know, do you have a speaker hat? I can't bring myself to I, buy a speaker. I hat. have three. <laughs> oh my God. And that's oh my goodness. Because, wait, that's, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> Oh, just what I had respect for you. <laughs> it was three. <laughs> They're actually not too bad. I have to say, but uh <laughs> it's kind of funny they are the butt of a lot of jokes i get it silly um <laughs> but i wanted to order one because they were 20 percent off last year so i ordered one and i reported on it and then three days later they had the same hats for 50 percent off so i had to get another one. <laughs> oh my goodness because then it was like 20 bucks so i was like okay I'm and then you got one in a bundle somewhere right you got yeah. some big bundle yes. yeah i knew it yep yeah. How did you know? <laughs> so yeah, I've got three. Well, because I saw all those <laughs> sales and resisted. That's how I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I just why would that. the twenty six hundred have Bluetooth so I could play it out of my speaker hat? Right, that's what it needs. <laughs> I know. I just wanted it because it's weird, you know. It's, it's yeah, it is. I mean, and now it's part of Atari kind of strange stuff that's come out. So mm -hmm. I have to get it. Yeah. You know? But <laughs> so I have three of them. Uh, but yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, I don't think it's that bad. It's, um, I'm like a big kind of a music. I was an iPod fan. I had all the speakers you could think of back in the day. And so it's like, okay, this is, but you know, who's going to walk around playing their favorite music where everyone can just hear it. How embarrassing. <laughs> you know? And it's kind of rude too. Isn't Especially it? our music or whatever that we like. Right. Probably right. it's, it might be good for like working in the yard right. or something. Right. But you don't yeah. go out in public. But. <laughs> Yeah, like if if I walked into a gas station with Duran Duran playing out of my hat, I'm gonna get shot out here. That's just all <laughs> there is to it. Okay, people are looking for an excuse to kill you out here. So yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna try it. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um. So, what do you have? Uh, do you have anything exciting coming up on your channel you want to talk about? Oh boy. Right well. Now? Um. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what, I have something exciting I can show you that's coming up very shortly. You ready? Let me just look down here. I'm very so excited this, because, because I know you get this uh, stuff this is, than uh, most of us. So this is something <laughs> that that ever ever since we first saw it, people have been like, I can't wait to get my hands on this. And I don't, haven't had my hands on it yet. It's still in the box. When I do the video, when I do the videos, it is my initial reaction. I'm not faking mm -hmm. any of that, right? So, right? so this thing, I think, is the most bizarre thing that's going to go down the annals of what were they thinking? I still think it's cool. <laughs> and it's this bananas thing. Oh, the joystick wow. player. Galaga. The weird Galaga thing. You see this? Oh, man. That is a little weird, but <laughs> I'm drawn to it because I yeah. love Galaga. I mean, and first, the first thing I'm asking is why is it not Gorf? But aside from that, <laughs> right. there's all the questions. It's like, well, can I see the screen past the joystick? And I'm like, well, yeah. guess what? I've got to shoot it. So we'll find out if you can see the screen. <laughs> I can't you know? right now. But, <laughs> but it has a it has a bigger screen. It's like 3.2 inches, so it's larger. That's we awesome. saw how what they did cool with the uh uh the Galagas, you know, the pocket players and stuff, but I've been dying to actually I couldn't even talk about having this until yesterday. But it's been sitting wow. here waiting for me to do something with it. I've been busy. So yeah, I'm excited about that coming up. And uh, what's kind of cool about yeah, that is, is it kind of reminds me of in the 90s, uh, Tiger Electronics had all these weird, yes, it's like games a weird with the, shaped with yeah, the LCD, you know more than VFD. Me, but they had mm -hmm. everything hanging off of it with, with a kitchen sink. And, and you're like, yep. is this a gaming system? I think that's kind of what they're trying to do right there is make it a little more retro and you know, sure. yeah, interesting. This is the first one that I might take the time to figure out how to mod to play Gorf on, you know, it's yeah, like, it's so and, important to me. It, needs it, it should gorf. have gorf, you know. It it's needs crazy. To be gorf or whatever. Yeah, it needs to be. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so yep. that's so cool. Um, wow. Yeah. So what was your um I noticed that you get a lot of my arcade stuff early. Do you have a relationship with them? Do they send you stuff to review? Because I'm really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so here's the thing. Actually, Gen X Grown Up, the YouTube channel, much of its early success was built on reviewing arcade toys. I found, mm -hmm. I first found a couple of my arcades at Walmart and I did a video and it did great, a, a great numbers for us. I'm like, we hit a thousand views. I'm like, holy crap, that's amazing, right? That was the top tier of anything we ever did. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, we talked about it at the beginning of this show, YouTube will tell you what it wants you to do. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, let's do something else. And it fell flat. I'm like, all right, let me go get a couple more of those toys from Walmart. <laughs> well, then I became the guy that did all of them. And I started to build a following off of that. Well, my arcade, a year ago, I was laid off from work. So I'm currently unemployed, which is a lie. My job right now is Gen X grown up. I'm mm. bleeding money, but I'm trying to make it work. Right. Mm. So I start chasing down leads, you know, and my arcade. And so, of course, you reach out to people and go, can I get a free one to review? You ask. And they say no. And it started with a really easy relationship with the PR person. And they started, they really liked what I did. And one day uh, I got a, I got an email that said, can you get on a call with us here at my arcade? I'm like, oh God, what did I do? I'm like, I've, I've made him really mad or something. <laughs> yeah. And I got on the yeah. And I got on it and it wasn't just like me talking. It was like a room full of guys at a board meeting and the CEO and all these people. I'm like, what's going on? Wow. And they're like, first of all, we're huge fans of Gen X grown up and what you do. Every time you review one of our products, we get together in the boardroom and watch it. Like what? <laughs> nice. So I think it's. What a compliment, we, right? We haven't had a relation. We haven't had a discussion about why, but between the lines, I think what they appreciate is. I don't intentionally crap on things. Mm -hmm. I don't like things, but I tell you why I don't like it, where it missed the mark, how it could be better. So if somebody goes, this is garbage, don't buy it. Who does that help? Yeah. It helps right. the consumer because the reason you don't like it might not matter to them. It doesn't help the company because they can't improve on it if they don't know the way to make it better, you know? And so- right. It, and it wasn't intentional, but my nature has always been to not be mean to people and just kind of go, uh, this is really bad. But if it had this, if they had done this, I think they missed the mark. They need to really focus on whatever. And they appreciated that when I criticized things, I said what made it better. And right. so right after CES, I did several videos following up CES because it were getting views. And that started a bigger relationship now where they send me stuff early and uh, I actually did a little consulting for them on the Game Station Pro months ago, back before it was nothing I could ever talk about. Well, now it's out. You can talk mm -hmm. about it. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, they don't pay me. You know, they don't, it's not like paid reviews or anything. They give me stuff. I disclose that. Uh, but it's been really nice to be able to get stuff early or at least right on the bleeding edge because that's, they say in YouTube, you got to do it first, best, or different. Like those, those are, pick yeah. one. All three is better. If you can do all three, yeah, that's so true. If you have first, that really helps because at least nobody else can take the thunder. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't do it better, the next guy that comes along is better than you. You're, you know, you're going to bleed them off, but at least it gives you a little yeah. leg up. So it's been a great relationship. They're very respectful. They send me more stuff than I could possibly use. And, <laughs> uh, and, and my audience has come to expect me to do it. So like, when are you going to do mega man? I'm like, it is sitting here. I just haven't gotten to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I have four different Tetrises sitting in a box next to me. Four different models of Tetris. <laughs> but I, could, I guess I'll do a video comparing all four. I don't I know, know what right? are you going to do. I, so, I yeah. actually got an email from someone at my arcade because I was in touch with someone about the Game Station Pro uh, mm -hmm. because I, I bought it from a website that suddenly had it out of stock. And yeah. I, was, I can tell you about that if you want. So go, go yeah. ahead. I can tell you why that happened. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to hear about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what happened was, cause I was talking to my guys, cause I knew when it was being announced and released because we were talking, right? Because I had an embargo. I couldn't talk about it till whatever, you know, and I respect those. That's, that's the great way to burn a bridge is burn an embargo. They'll never talk to you again. Right. Right. Uh, not that I would, but just don't do it. Right. Um, <laughs> so what happened was they're like, um, John, you've been so helpful with us. Um, Everybody else that has one of these, their embargo will be after your review drops, whenever that is. And they said, well, we're going to announce it on X date. I think it was September 18th or something. They officially did it. But like 
six weeks before that, it started popping up everywhere, Amazon and everything. Mm -hmm. It was an accident in listings. Mm -hmm. So initially, long ago, when they registered all the QR codes, the release date was back in August. But they changed that. And lots of people didn't get the memo. So effectively, it just like automatically went live on whatever date it went live. And everybody was like, hey, you can order it now. But my arcade was like, not from us. <laughs> You're getting mm. zero stock because we're not releasing it yet. They yeah. didn't They didn't read the memo that it was, was postponed. So that's why people get mad going, oh, my order got canceled and it went out of stock. It was never in stock. It never should have taken orders. That's what happened with that false start. Yes. Give me one second. My doorbell is going on. Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> You're good. No one ever really bought for Bell unless it's important that it was some salesman. Uh, was like, I wanted to make sure. <laughs> so, but yeah. No, I was always kind of, uh, I was wondering how you get this stuff so early. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. I was a little jealous, but you know, I'm glad <laughs> you have that relationship because that that's good for the company too, to get, and this is what Atari needs to do as well. Yeah. You know, well, it, 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 like I said, look, this is currently my job. And so it, it, it's not just me, by the way, I, I'm the only one full time, but I have two colleagues that work with me. Um, and they they have regular jobs, they do regular stuff, but they help me out. They do kind of the back end stuff. I have a, my one of my best friends, George. He he's on the podcast with me, of course, but he's also kind of the relationship and business manager because I never run businesses, yeah. you know. So when somebody says, oh, "I want to talk to you about reviewing this thing," I go talk to George. I have a guy, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have this little team, this team, and it's it's in some ways it's hard to do it with a team because you have disagreements, but in other ways. It's more efficient because if you find a you know, delineation of work, it can really help you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it, it's it's there's no magic. And I do a daily vlog. Ever since I lost my job, every morning I get up every weekday and I record a vlog about what I did yesterday, where I'm at, what I'm doing tomorrow, and I report in that every day. And I talk about things I can talk about, like what's coming up next and what I'm working on. And when I do talk about that, you know, I I mention things like, um, you know. If you've watched this vlog every day, I'll say, you know, if watched this blog, vlog every day over the last few months, you'll see that today I'm dropping a review of this thing that nobody else has. But you also saw me talking over the last few months about I'm, you know, I'm working hard on this. I can't tell you about. I'm talking with these people I can't tell right. you about. <laughs> yeah. There's no magic. There's no magic. Things don't just drop in your lap. You have to build a relationship. And right. out of that relationship comes benefits, right? So, it's, you know, it, we built some relationships. We you start with baby steps and look in the first six years that this channel existed, we got 2 million views in the last 11 months. We got 5 million more. It's working. It yeah. could be faster. I need more. I'm not sustainable yet, but you need those relationships. They need eyeballs on their stuff and yeah. you need stuff to put eyeballs on. Right. So it's exactly. a symbiotic relationship. It really is. If they trust you, if, you know, if, yeah. if they know that you're going to, treat the things you do, don't like with respect just as much as you'd like the things you, you do. And I do that. And so uh, I don't do it to make you or anybody else jealous. I do it because I'm trying, I'm trying to make a living, but I get it because I was right where you were three years yeah. ago where I'm like, right. how the hell does he have this? It's not even on the shelves yet. Well, it's not yeah. magic. It's because he does the work. Yeah, exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that relationship is important. And then, mm -hmm. and then not just going forward, but what's on your channel right now. Like, are you, are you, do you fit their profile of a person they might want to consider right now? It's right. Uh, you know, with, with what's on your mm -hmm. channel right now for, just right. for yep. Yep. all the creators yep. out there. Watching. Do I want to be so, affiliated with this person? Right. Do I want to be, yeah, right. uh, yeah, do exactly. I want my video to be next to this other thing? Right. Is he doing terrible yeah. stuff and then a review? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, I try not to be too ranty because, you know, I, you know, I want to, I want people to walk away with the happy feeling after watching a video, not, not a negative downer. You know, I, I, I try not to be too like negative on my channel because it just doesn't do anything, you know, 
And it's the mm-hmm. same talking points you hear here and there, you know, all the clickbait headlines, whatever. It's like, <laughs> eh, you know, I don't want to do that. I would rather bring positivity into the world. And so I get accused of being someone that loves everything Atari puts out, but I, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not a fan <laughs> of Days of Doom as we talked about and mm-hmm. I'll tell people why, you know, it's not my thing, but it might be your thing, you know? There's but, a difference between loving everything they put out and loving to talk about everything they put out. Yes. Two very different things. I can love the discussion without loving the thing. Yeah. I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> you know? Okay. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have about, about three and a half minutes left. It goes okay. by quick. Do you want to tell us in our last few minutes about your first video game memory you have as a kid? I love asking, sure. I love asking this question because everyone has something that just uh, yeah, it's my it's first awesome. video. You know, it, I don't know if it's my very first memory, but it's the one that's most indelibly burned into my brain. And it's, uh, I played arcade games, I think, already. I'm guessing I, my timeline is off, but it was. I wanted the Atari VCS. I mean, we're talking, this is like 78. This is right after the launch, right? So I wanted it so bad. And I was nine, right? So I was born in 69. So I was already nine years old. So the perfect age for getting a VCS. It was too expensive. So my parents, I said, you know what? You're going to get the, the Sears Telegames Pong instead. It's a video game. And we talked about, they think it's a commodity. You have milk there. You don't need more milk, right? right. So, so what I did was, is the, the clever industrious John at nine years old figured this out, right? I got my dad hooked on Palm and we played it so much. And I just started laying these little landmines like, man, <laughs> this is fun. Aren't you enjoying this? You know, yeah. that Atari that I wanted, you could play lots of different games. You know, that Atari that I wanted is in color. You know, that Atari I wanted, the, the controllers are, they have a stick and not just a paddle, you know? And eventually he's like, all right, it still looks like the boy wants that other one. <laughs> he let me pack it up. We got in the car. We drove back to Sears. We refunded the Telegames Pong. And I got my first Sears Telegames video arcade because I roped my dad into knowing how much better the other one would be. And that became a lifelong obsession with that and everything related to it. So You had to sell it to him, right? <laughs> I did. I had to show him. Here, it's great. not a commodity. See, it's a thing and it can be better. Yeah. And the better one was the one you said I couldn't have. And he's, all right, that's what we're going to get. <laughs> well, my dad, you know, ever, our first was the Sears Telegames with Steeplechase. And because he was a big Sears guy. And we came mm-hmm. home and him, my mom played up till three in the morning and I was pissed off. He wouldn't let us in their room. <laughs> and he said, this is a family computer video system. I was like, dad, it's a video game console, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And but he called it a, a computer it was a serious computer for serious adult work in their bedroom. They were in their playing packet. I could hear it. Of course. Yeah. But, you know, and I was like, well, they were in their thirties. I guess that makes sense. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know? let them have their fun. Yeah. And that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it, it was really cute to see them fall in love with it themselves. And then every year Santa would bring us another few games or a new controller. Cause, cause we brewed the controllers left and right. And so every year Santa brought another one or whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. But uh, <laughs> lots of cool memories, but I appreciate you coming on so much, Sean, our time is up, but everyone, please go check out um, Gen X Grown Up on YouTube. I'll put the links below. Plus I'll feature some clips here and there from your, your, uh, your. Uh, sure. Video. Sure. Yeah. And keep it, keep up the good work. You're doing great. And we love your videos. Thank you for having me on. You know, it, it's so heartwarming when, when someone like you, wants to have me on their show because I respect what you do. You're a real great guy. And the fact that you want to associate with what I'm doing tells me that I'm doing something right. So I really appreciate Aww. the invitation. Thank you so Thank you much. Me. That means a lot. Thank you. Of course. Much success to you. Thank you. Bye. See ya. It's game over time, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Huge thanks to John uh, from Gen X Grown Up for joining me. Uh, it is my honor, man. I said such a cool thing to talk to you. Um, um, I place you in the league of such folks as John Hancock and others and um, that are huge in the community and in the vintage gaming community, as big as you can be, right? And um, just cool guys, really down to earth and helpful. So um, that was awesome. I loved it. So in two weeks, guys, I'm going to be uh, 
talking about reviews for the Atari Game Station Pro by my arcade this is coming out um on the 31st of october so a day after this i should have it on my doorstep which is cool if i don't already i know this was at costco as well and other places before so some of you probably already have it but um i can't wait to talk about it and dig into it it's never too late right um so um it just came out i can't wait to dig into it uh so that's coming up after that in a month from now i'm going to have on tony longworth he is the um he's an awesome musician first of all he's a huge atari fan he does music for into the vertical blank on their podcast and um, i've also used one of his tracks for atari newsline so uh, the song you hear for that is his so i'm going to talk to him about what it uh, is like being a musician and an atari fan uh, his whole life and uh, what that means to him and what he thinks about new Atari and old Atari and everything. So I'm actually interviewing him tomorrow as of this airing. So that's going to air a month from now. So uh, awesome, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be a good person. Get your Java and go play some freaking Atari and hopefully your game station uh, pro. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye now. So Gen X Grown Up ranked the Atari Game Station Pro 3.5 out of 5. How do you rank it? You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy.